Section 126 covers what we call the retained subjunctive, and it's in Hansen and Quinn's Greek, an intensive course, on page 471. Retained subjunctive deals with instances where you would normally follow the sequence of moods. So we've had that with purpose clauses where we have hinahos or hopos, the conjunction, and then we choose the subjunctive or optative according to the sequence of moods. So if the introductory verb is in the primary sequence, we choose the subjunctive, and if it's in the secondary sequence, some verb in past time, we choose the optative. The same goes for fear clauses, where the conjunction is may, but everything else is the same. So for instance, we could have this purpose clause, elfen eis ten polen hina korelsai, she came to the city in order that she might dance, and there, because we're in secondary sequence, elfen is aorist, korelsai is optative. But with the retained subjunctive, we can have the same sentence, the same purpose clause, elfen eis ten polen hina korelsai. We can keep the subjunctive for a sense of vividness is the way this gets explained by the grammarians. And the main thing that you need to know is not to be surprised by it when it happens. It's maybe a little bit more um, focused, a little bit more vivid, a little bit more in your face, but there's not really any way to reflect that in your translation. So let's give you a fear clause um, example. Ephobumatha me aiskra poyoye. There we have secondary sequence. We feared that she might do shameful things. Ephobumatha is imperfect. But you can do that with a retained subjunctive. Ephobumatha me aiskra poyoi. And it means the same thing, just a little bit more vivid. And that's really all there is to know about retained subjunctive. Just don't be surprised if it happens. Nothing has gone wrong with your author. It's just something that you're allowed to do with, um, with these clauses that use the sequence of moods.